You ever wanted to be a pro Yu-Gi-Oh player? I think we all have at one point. We've all wanted to think that we could reach that quote-unquote pro status that we could, you know, better ourselves as a player and just reach like the pinnacle of success. Well, I actually found out what the main habits of pro Yu-Gi-Oh players are. So if that sounds interesting, let's hop into it. What's going on, you guys? Slim here, yet again with another uh, kind of off-the-wall discussion, but something that I think will definitely help any player playing Yu-Gi-Oh from if you're just starting out to if you have multiple tops etc etc uh this is something that i actually wanted to do for a really long time and i want to give a huge huge shout out uh to my good friend manav dewar you guys probably all know him manav has been on a tirade with sky strikers he is the sky striker god one of them and has been you know just tearing it up at every event he goes to he is the ycs 200 champion he, his credentials are through the roof, and for those of you that know him personally, he's just an amazing person, and he was actually the person I addressed with this question. I told him that I was making a video for my subscribers, and I wanted to hear it from the words of someone who I personally feel is a pro Yu-Gi-Oh player. Now, I know a lot of you are going to say, oh, Slim, pro is so overrated, all this crap, you know, yes, I understand, but I'm going to use the term pro in the sense that I feel that, yes, he is a professional player, and yes, uh, he has achieved a level of success that most people, myself included, would love to achieve. Like, you're kidding yourself if you really think that you would not actually want to win a championship or, you know, do well at an event. Maybe you don't have, you know, the aspirations to be super successful in the game, but I think deep down inside, most people do. So we're going to talk about this and yeah, uh, shout out to Manav for giving me uh, the top five habits of pro Yu-Gi-Oh players and hopefully you learned something from this video. So first and foremost, the number one habit of pro Yu-Gi-Oh players, they know all their rulings. Now I'm going to be the first to say, me and rulings? Yeah, we uh, uh we, we don't mesh very well, but yeah. Pro Yu-Gi-Oh players, they know their card rulings. They know their card interactions. They know everything about their deck. They know everything with certain like weird interactions, missing the timing, uh, you know, how to chain block, all these little things. And I'm sure you guys watch MST, uh, MST.TV, Tombox. You need to learn stuff like I do. Go over there and watch that man's videos because literally rulings, interactions, stuff like that, stuff I didn't know, I walked away learning something. Please check it out because I think anytime someone takes the time to give you the, that kind of resource, you'd be an idiot not to use it. But yeah, pro Yu-Gi-Oh players, they know their rulings. They know what the hell is going on in their game state at any point in the game. And that is huge. I feel like the rule book is great and it's something that honestly you should read. You definitely should read. I'm guilty of this. I haven't read the rule book in a long time. The rules are available online. The rules are available in the book when you get a structure deck. We should utilize those resources. Calling judges at events is fine. Sometimes they know the ruling. Sometimes they don't get it 100% right. Sometimes you have to appeal to the head judge. And there have been times that even the head judge is incorrect. I know. I know. But yeah, there have been times where there have been rulings that just make no sense. And having a grasp on your rulings is huge. It will give you a huge edge as a player and will just make it convenient uh, for any event that you go to because you'll know what's going on. Uh, the second uh, habit of pro Yu-Gi-Oh players is they know how to play every deck in the format. Remember how I said switching decks is fine? You know how I said you can, you know, learn a new deck? Yeah, pro Yu-Gi-Oh players actually do this. Now, again, I'm no pro. I probably will not ever be a pro. I look at these five things, and I do a lot of these, but, uh, you know, same thing. We, we don't know what's going to happen. But anyways, you know how to play every deck in the format, every deck in the meta. The reason is you need to prepare for anything. Now, I know you could think you're going to walk into an event and play nothing but Solomon Great and Sky Strikers. You might. I thought I was going to play nothing but Salomon Great and Sky Strikers, especially Salomon Great, when I entered the room at UDS Vegas. You know what ended up happening? I got my ass kicked from here all the way to Timbuktu and back because I made a poor meta call and I literally played zero Salomon Great, zero, and one Sky Striker the entire tournament. Isn't that crazy? I made a poor meta call. And the other thing was is... 
I didn't know how to play the other decks. I didn't know really that much about Solomon Great. I thought that their board was subpar compared to what my deck could do. It was a going second deck, and yeah, I found out the hard way that, yeah, uh, sometimes you just don't play against the said decks you think you will, and for that reason, you'll play Rogue. You need to how to play, know how to play against decks like True Draco. You need to ha know how to play against decks like Subterror, Alter Geist, Paleozoic. Uh, you know, of course, your main decks like Striker, Solomon Great, Thunder Dragons, Danger decks, everything. You need to have a huge, like, encyclopedia of knowledge up here of knowing how to play against every deck. Now, I know that's not easy for everyone. You have to invest time into it. You have to do research. You have to watch YouTube videos. YouTube videos are the best resource because a lot of these replay channels, a lot of these things, they show you how the deck works. You can learn. You can pause. You can replay. You can learn where interactions are, where the most important form of interruption can be, and it's very important that you master how to play all decks i know for a fact if i asked any pro player they would know the main things about pretty much every deck they may not play it themselves but they definitely know what the deck does so when they play when they sit down to play if they're playing against orcus they know what to do if they're playing against center dragon they know what to do if they're playing against striker they know what to do and they know their mirror match very well that's another huge thing pro players know their mirror matches i'm going to put this in with the knowing every deck in the format uh uh, example, but yeah, they know how to play their mirror match very well too. They know the interactions and they know how to win in the end. So very important. Uh, the third uh, habit of pro Yu-Gi-Oh players is they keep up with the OCG, OCG land. Magical, magical place where Max C is at three and Stratos is at two and they brought back a dragon ruler and there's a million and they have Harpy's Feather Duster and there's like a million other things. Now I know a lot of people think, okay, OCG, they're separate from us. Yes, I understand. Back in the day, it wasn't like that, you guys. Back in the day, those of you OGs like me that remember Shriek, uh, what was it, Shriek, I believe? Shriek.OCG or something like that, that old website that used to be the way to see decks and stuff before you YGO organization, God bless you, uh, you know, took the reins on things. Man, that was the resource because back in the day, our ban lists were the same. You could learn so much. I remember when I first played the Malefic Skill Drain deck. Those of you that have been following this channel for as long as, I mean, I think this was 2011, 2012 when I played that deck, I want to say give or take i got the deck from japan i literally built the deck from japan just like a guy did who topped a ycs and that's where the deck idea came from and it was actually crazy so yeah uh fall keeping up with the ocg now now yes we have different band lists but one thing you can do is you can see trends you can see how they've uh basically improve their decks with every ban list how they've innovated their decks with every ban list you see why sky striker is still playing insane like when kagari went to one out there before it happened to us they were already ahead of the curve they knew what to do and i'm sure all the sky striker players just adapted here in the tcg you learn so many things from the ocg and the thing is i think it's an undervalued resource yg organization amazing site like you you have to visit it at least once or twice a week i know i do just because it lets me learn things it lets me learn trends in decks it lets me see things you learn text and stuff that you never knew before you knew about the mind deck ages before because of you know ocg so you can always prepare uh and be ahead of the curve by following the ocg i feel that's a huge huge resource because you see how they do things you can mimic them out here make some changes based on our ban list and then if the exact hits that happened in japan happened here in tcg you know what happened you were already ahead of the curve you already knew what to do so you don't fall behind so that's definitely a habit that i know uh, most pro pl uh Yu-Gi-Oh players do utilize okay the fourth uh way uh, the fourth habit of pro Yu-Gi-Oh players. I've stressed this one a lot. Have a great testing group. That doesn't mean, you know, just test with your friends who play casually or do whatever. You're trying to be a pro Yu-Gi-Oh player. You're trying to be competitive. You're trying to, you know, just reach the pinnacle of success as far as you can. And you need teammates or friends or a testing group that has the same goals and higher goals than you. I've stressed this in pretty much every video I've been doing, but I think it just really comes home when you hear it out of you know the mouth of a pro Yu-Gi-Oh player or someone that has a lot of success as a champion, etc. You need a good testing group. If you don't have a good testing group, it kind of sucks. You can play online to your heart's content, but it's not the same as playing real life Yu-Gi-Oh. And when you have a group of friends or whatever, uh, like a, a group that has the same goals, has the same aspirations, has higher aspirations, it motivates you. It gets you in that mind state to do better it gives you in that mind state to keep going keep pushing and that's the thing is that 
you need that. You really need that. It's that motivational push you need. And trust me, it's like anything in life. As long as you have a positive group, a group that builds you up, you know, doesn't break you down, builds you up, encourages you to do better, points out your flaws, like you're going to get better overall as a player. And you need this, especially if you're going to be a professional player, or a competitive player, you need a good testing group. There's no way around it. And the fifth and final uh, habit of pro Yu-Gi-Oh players is they keep their head in the game and they don't lose focus. What this basically means is you're going to play a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh. You're going to play a lot of games that you win. You're going to play a lot of games that you lose. And you're going to be in game states that are enough to just drive you crazy. I've been there, and I'm no professional. I've been there where I'm literally like this, looking at my opponent's field, thinking, okay, how do I out this? Trying to you know, figure out the things. Most people get overwhelmed. And you know what happens when you get overwhelmed? You misplay. You in inevitably scoop. You know, all these things. The perfect example, because if I don't have a story, I mean, it's not a slim video. My last regionals, round nine, um, it was game three against Orcus, and... I lanceed him and he ended on a Galatea. I believe it was just a Galatea. So his hand was not that strong and I ended he ended, I lanceed him and he ended on a Galatea. I start revealing danger, start doing my thing. You guys remember uh, the deck I was playing and I eventually get to a state where I've got some dangers on the field. I'm doing some math. I'm like, okay, you know, I'm putting in my calculator. I'm like, okay, I just got to clear the Galatea. It doesn't do anything. I'm like, all right, I just got to punch over this, do this, do this, do this, do this. You know, opponent's life point shit hit zero. Then I'm like, okay, if I make a Wee Witch's Apprentice, this is definitely game. So I go and make a Wee Witch's Apprentice. Slam it on the field thinking, yes, this is game. As soon as I attack, it's game. I win. To that, he drops Phantasmae. And my whole world just comes crashing down. Let me tell you, crashing down. I literally, I don't know who was sitting next to me or around me. Could have thought I literally was just like, <laughs> I literally hit the table. Because I was like, in my head, I was literally like, well, me. I wasn't expecting that and it like threw me off my game and I was actually about to scoop. True story. I thought I lost. Phantasmia is a dark. What does We Witch's Apprentice do? It gives all dark monsters 500 attack points. Meaning that Phantasmia was bigger than what, you know, some of the monsters I had on the field. Even if I cleared it, it would not be game. And then next turn, he can just come back a full Orcus combo. I have no Lancias. I've committed everything out of my hand. This is it. I'm about to lose. And then I refocused. I looked at my extra deck. I calmed down. I took a breath. Looked at my extra deck like, like a madman, honestly. And then I did some simple math. And I made a Boral Sword. I had a Prankatops 2. And I won that game. Now I know, just to regionals, but I'll tell you right now, to this day, even though it wasn't that long ago, that was definitely one of the most intense moments I had playing recently, and I almost just messed it all up. I almost scooped. I almost didn't see the way to, the, the way to win, and that's the thing is, professional Yu-Gi-Oh players, they don't lose their focus. They don't do basically what I almost did. They don't lose their focus. They keep their head in the game. And yes, I did regroup, but it taught me something that I need to not, like in a sense, overreact to what's happening, uh, to my opponent's responses, and not think that I'm down and out just yet. Because trust me, you do that, it sucks. And luckily, I collected myself and I got to where I needed to be with that. But yeah, those are the top five habits of pro Yu-Gi-Oh players. Again, Thank you, Manav. Hopefully, we'll see him at Worlds. Uh, he's been really grinding. I believe he's number one at Worlds points here in the U.S., so it's pretty crazy. But, yeah, I know we're not all professional players. I've said it. But if you really want to improve your game, these are the five habits of really, really good professional Yu-Gi-Oh! players. And to be honest, they're not that hard. All of these things here, they're really not that hard. This is simple stuff, simple advice that if you follow... It'll improve your game, and I mean, it doesn't get better than that. But anyways, you guys, as always, that's the video. All the stuff's around. Ring the bell if you want to know when I upload videos, wherever the bell is. Subscribe if you enjoy these videos. Like the video. It helps me a lot. I try to strive for 100 likes on each video just so I know you guys like this format of videos. And yes, 
God, yes, the pure Thunder Dragon deck is coming. It is in a box. I am literally just, I had I had lent out one of my Colossus. I'm getting it back. I'm not going to profile it with two Colossus. One, you know damn well it plays three. As soon as I get back that uh, get that back tonight or whatever, the profile will be going up in the next couple of days. Uh, worked on it a good amount. Gotten a lot of assistance from people. So I think you guys will really enjoy it. But yeah. That's it, you guys. Whatever um, whatever you think about professional players, positive light, negative light, you know, at the end of the day, they work hard. They work hard just like in anything in life, and it's better to know the habits of successful people, to learn from them, to mimic them in a sense so that you too can achieve the same success. But yeah, let me know down in the comments below if I missed anything, if there's any other habits you think that pro players uh uh, exhibit and we'll definitely um, you know uh, create continue the conversation in the comments but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed these things you know you know 100 plus of these makes me feel pretty good so yeah hope you guys enjoyed I'll see you guys next time thank you for watching